Hi everybody and um, welcome to Rob's Funk and Junk episode number 17. Where have I been? I'm so sorry, I've been away for quite some time. I think about two months since my last podcast. Um, I have received some messages saying, where are you? What's going on? Have you stopped? Um, Let me just get my new, hang on, I'm just getting my mic levels right here. Yeah, I um yeah, I just took a bit of a break. To be honest, I was um as you know if you did listen to my previous rantings and warblings, I was on tour uh, for quite a while in France and um it just was uh you know, the tour was was going great. It was great fun. I had a great time. Um apart from the monitoring hell that we were in, but you know, that got sorted out in the end. Um but I was also doing quite a lot of sessions while I was away as well and it was just uh and and also traveling every day um on a train from from city to city in France it all just became a little bit overwhelming and uh I also kind of found myself saying actually because uh, you know when you're on tour it can be a little bit groundhog day so I just said one week have a break So I did have a break, um, and then that became another week of a break, and then another, and another. Um, I got back just before Christmas, and I just wanted to have a few days off, ready for Christmas and stuff like that, and then, listen to me, excusing myself like I'm, uh, like I'm, (laughs) like I've turned up late for work, but yeah, I just wanted to have a bit of a break, and then that break become slightly more extended, so I'm sorry if... I've upset anybody, Um, didn't mean to, I just want to have, you know, a bit of time with my family. Um, I did go away for a gig on New Year's Eve to the Maldives, uh, which was really, really nice, really pleasant, Um, and yeah, I just sort of just took some time out, just took a bit of time out, that's okay, isn't it? Am I allowed to take some time out? Um, And also... I didn't really have a lot to say at the time. Hang on one second. Um, I'm just updating something here. I'm updating my quad cortex. Um, Sorry. Um, Yeah, I just, uh, I didn't, you know, eventually I was thinking, what am I going to talk about today? I've got nothing to say. I haven't done anything. I'm not doing anything. (laughs) I'm taking a bit of time off. So, um, you know, I went and did a gig away in the Maldives over New Year's, which was amazing with my good friend's Ryan and Suze, um, we had a great time, although the Maldives was amazing, it was 28 hours away, it was brilliant, um, I got to swim with uh, a few little sharks, which are, you know, they, they were swimming around my feet, um, which I absolutely love, because I'm, I love sharks, I'm uh, really into sharks, I've been into sharks since I was a little kid, um, I just love them. Jaws is my favourite film, although, you know, the, you know, although, um, you know, the, the, the treatment of that shark wasn't great at the end, <laughs> but it's a film. Anyway, shut up, Rob, I'm talking crap already, I've only just started talking. Um, but yeah, I, I got back uh, and then just sort of had, a, I made myself take two weeks off when, uh, when I got back after, after New Year's and, uh, Ray and I have been doing, sorting some stuff out with the house and, uh, you know, um, starting to sort of think about the, the decor that we're going to have in house and all that stuff, um, which I just tend to sort of uh, go along with. Um, well, actually, no, I do put in plenty of ideas. But anyway, that's what I'm doing. Just been doing stuff, living life uh, and enjoying myself for a bit which uh, a bit more, because I always enjoy myself. I um, am now talking through, I've made a few little purchases actually, I am now talking through the Universal Audio Sphere mic modelling, I think it's the DLX version. Um, I retired my SM7, which I was using for podcasts before, uh, my Shure SM7, and I'm now using um, the the Sphere modelling mic um, with an SM7, well, actually, I might change it afterwards. I'm going to try it out, see what, try a few different things out with it. But it sounds all right in my headphones at the moment. But yeah, I'm using that. I went out and bought one of those. 
just be, because of the way I work here in my studio, um, rather than having um, six microphones set up around me all the time with cables and stands and all that stuff, or or um, wanting to change a mic in the middle of a session, I can now just switch the mic over um, to a different model in either after I've recorded or before I've recorded, whatever, you know, whatever sort of does the thing. Um, and I must say, it's pretty damn good. It sounds flipping amazing. I nearly swore. Um, it sounds fucking great. It's really good. Um, I know it's probably not, It well, I know it's definitely not the same as having a Neumann U67 in front of you, but I don't have seven grand to go and buy one microphone that I might use twice a year. So if it sounds 95% like a like a Neumann 67, then yeah, I'm all in, man. I'm I'm up for that. I want it, I am um, I like to get things done quickly um and not let anything get in the way of uh my recording stuff. Um I've been using it on a few vocal things. Yes, I have been doing some singing lately and uh I might put that out to people to listen to and uh you know, put them off their cornflakes in the morning. Um, but yeah, it's brilliant. I got that. Um, what else have I got? I have also, I went out and bought these Slate VSX um, headphones for mixing stuff, helping to mix a few things. Just trying them out. You know, I'm not scared of new technology. I like it. If it's good and it and it, and it gets you there quicker. Um, I do, you know, I'm going back to this thing where uh, I posted up something about being in a studio. I did a session, that's right, I did a session in between Christmas and New Year's um, where I was in a studio, um, excuse my air conditioning coming in in the background there, it's really loud, but I was in a studio and it was a lovely studio, uh, it's called Sphere actually, Sphere, no, Core, Core Studios I think it was called. Um, and we were in there recording and there was a drum session and everything was recorded to mic um the drum kits mic'd up they've got a rack full of amazing mic pre's and compressors and all that stuff um but the engineer was using the universal audio plugins as the preamps the unison plugins so i think he was using the apis for certain things and maybe neves for other uh, you know like the kick and snare for a neve whatever it was it sounded fantastic very quickly it sounded great um, and I posted up a picture on my Instagram page and, uh, you know, pointing out that all this outboard gear is there. However, it was, you know, the sounds were all got, gotten together using in the box mixes, uh, in the box plugins. And I had a few comments like, oh, you know, how can anyone use that when you've got all that gear sat there? You know, don't, they obviously don't know the difference. And I'm like, oh man, chill out, man doesn't matter doesn't matter <laughs> yes if that's what you want to do do that that's great but it's not a uh you know i think people would be surprised with when things are recorded in big studios sometimes it doesn't sound great there either you know it doesn't matter just because you're using a vintage neve or an api it still doesn't matter it 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 not it doesn't necessarily mean it's better just because it's an old thing, or it's got class A transformers or whatever the fuck they put in these things. I mean, a lot of the time they just you know I'm sure they just made it up as they went along. Oh, we've run out of that one. I'll oh, put this in instead, um, a piece of Lego or something. <laughs> they just strap in. Now I know there are engineers out there that will go. Well, you know, actually it does sound better. This adds this harmonic distortion to this, and but. Yeah, I agree. I'm sure it does. But when you're working and you're you're uh, you want to get something down quickly whilst the moment is happening. You know, that's why I've gone out and got this mic, because I'll have an idea. I'll have a part ready to record, but I'll go, oh, it's not quite sounding right on this microphone. So hang on. Let me put my guitar down, go into the, you know, the back thing, get my mic out, get a stand out, have another cable power the mic up, get the power supply, get the valves to warm up. And by that time, well, not always, but you know, you might not be feeling as vibey as you did before because you then have to get the sound together 
And that's why I think this microphone, for the way I work, is brilliant. I don't work for Universal Audio. Um, they don't give these. They, they don't give me these for free. I had to pay for it, but it's. Uh, I love the. I love the technology, the way it works, and uh, you know, that's me. As equally, I love plugging in my old Fender Princeton reverb, and that sounds amazing too. Um, it's all valid. It is all valid. Um, I think people get way too precious. If you're working on a Tedeschi Trucks record and you are going for those completely rootsy organic things, great. Break out the hardware. Um, but when you're working as fast and, and uh, having to do sessions for people and, and they want results quickly and you want results quickly, you know, you have to strike while the iron's hot. Um, which takes me to, uh, has anyone, oh, has anyone out there been, as uh, I've been on my train journeys that I had, I was checking out the uh, Steve Lukather interviews that he's done recently. Now, anyone who knows me knows I'm a massive Steve Lukather fan. I, he's, you know, he's, he's a god, that guy. Um, especially his session stuff. I love the Toto stuff. But especially the stuff he played on on records, I think he's a genius. Um, and yeah, I, you know, I, I I did read the book. I read the book and listened to the audio book. Um, and you know, I love all those stories, all those studio stories, like the stu the story about um, the Beat It session, how they had to um, him and Jeff Picaro had to go into the studio, and all they had was Michael Jackson's vocal. Um, and Eddie Van Halen's solo. The rest of the track wasn't usable because apparently Eddie Van Halen's engineer, when he uh, when he got sent over the, the tapes to do the solo on, he wanted to change the section of the song that he was soloing on. He kind of, I think he did a rearrangement of the song, which you could, you know, it's Eddie Van Halen. So they cut into the tapes uh, to to edit the uh, the arrangement and uh, cut through the Simpty track which meant that the tracks would no longer sync up old school technology, tape machines and all that stuff. But anyway, that meant that Quincy Jones had to uh, sort of reach out to Steve Lukather and Jeff Picaro and said, look, I need you to fix this for me. And uh, If I send you what we've got, can you work on the track? And uh, I think Jeff Picaro had to go out there and all they had was Michael's quadrupled vocals um, that were tightly edited and Eddie solo and just the bleed in the headphones in Michael Jackson's cans. So from listening to that, he went out and made a click track using his drumsticks and then went out and then did two takes of drums. And then uh, Steve Lucas then did his guitar parts and bass parts. And I mean, he's told this story quite a few times, but ah oh, man, I could just listen to those things all day long. Those stories about old studio sessions and how they used to cut things and, you know, getting through four songs on a day and all that stuff. I just, man, if they made a film about that, if they made a program about that, I would watch it every day. Um, I do actually, I have heard, he did mention that I think Netflix are doing a documentary on him. The only thing I wish, and as I'm such a huge Steve Lukather fan, it does. Uh, it, it, I mean, he he's so self-effacing about his own playing. After a while, it, it it sort of gets a bit, you know, brings you down. Listen to him putting himself down all the time. But he is an absolute genius, and uh, yeah, it's been good listening to that stuff. So um, yeah, if you haven't heard him, go and check him out. He did he did a great one with uh, Rick Beato, and he did another one on YouTube about sound uh, uh, sunset sound. Where you know he's, you know he's talking about cutting, cutting solos and you know or, or working on a track and then walking past the next room and someone else is in there and they're like, oh Steve, can you come in and just play a solo on this track for me? And you know, <laughs> and he's like 19 years old at the time. Um, I'm going to pause it one second because I've got a phone call coming in. One second. Bye. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm back. I should have done one of those sort of uh, call waiting things. Um, yeah, that was just a mate of mine. From PRS Guitars on the phone, uh, asking about some stuff. Um, 
which is hopefully, fingers crossed, coming up in the next couple of months. Um, but yes, where was I? Uh, what was I talking about? Um, what was I talking about? The microphone. I think I was talking about the microphone. Anyway, um, oh, what happened there? Right. My wife's just come in. Hi. I'm just doing my podcast. Are you doing your podcast? I do yes. apologise. It's all right. I did not know. I was measuring chicken coops. Measuring chicken coops. <laughs> <laughs> That's something you don't say yeah. today, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, we've decided we're going to get some chickens in our back garden. And, uh, Yay! Add to the family. Add to the family. Um, yeah, yeah, chickens. <laughs> it'll be a zoo. Um, yeah, so uh, what else was I saying? Oh, so yeah, I'm updating my quad cortex today as well. They've um, they released an, an update the other day, um, which is something I've been waiting for them to do. Uh, it just means it's become even better for me anyway, for, for the way I use it. It's become even better. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm going to get my head around that. But I've uh, uh, what else has happened? I have got two new guitars since we last spoke. Um, I uh, got a, a a kind of new friend um, helped me get a, I shouldn't even say this really. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I got a, um, a Sire H7, which is the Larry Carlton thing, which is which is really cool. An amazing guitar, actually, I must say. Um, that uh, has some P90s in it, which is something I haven't had. Um, and I recently just got hold of a, a little Harmony Juno as well, um, which I'm, I only got last week, so I'm, I'm giving that a try out um really cool little instrument uh what else is happening um yeah i've just been doing sessions just sat at home sessions a few little gigs out and about um uh just little bits of work popping in you know always quiet this time of year january february is always notoriously quiet so yeah i've just been having some time at home um we did go out to see the 1975 the other week uh, over in Manchester. That was a really, really great show. Uh, my kids, Ollie and Libby, are absolutely mad about 1975. So we went to see them. Um, brilliant, brilliant band, brilliant songs. Uh, was interesting, though, um, that, you know, every their songs, you know, they, they obviously have their sound. Um, their new album's great. Um, but there are a few songs on their new album that are slightly out of what they usually do. Um, there's a few sort of ballady type things, uh, which aren't sort of their, I mean, it, they, it sounds like them still, but it's not the kind of major record, um, things that they do. Um, and, uh, it was interesting to see as soon as they started playing them, you could see the, like all the kids down in the audience just immediately sort of get their phones out and start looking at their phones and walking off and it's like oh man it's so difficult you know when 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 you have a thing to to break out of it i know uh whenever we uh, have a new jamiroquai album out which is yeah which was quite a way back now but um whenever we're playing a new song from a new album you can see the audience members just sort of their eyes kind of, it's either they're taking it all in and trying to figure out what it is you're doing or they're just glazing over and they're not interested. They just want to hear the hits. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a brilliant show. Their stage show was incredible. The way, the way they've done it is amazing. Um, um, and, uh, they, you know, as it's an arena show and festivals, they, they have a rack of, uh, a rack of Kempers out the back. Um, you know, sorry, all you purists, but they do have a rack of Kempers out the back because that's just how it's done these days or for those types of gigs anyway. Um, what else? I did have some emails. Let me go through my emails. Um, hang on a minute. Oh, sorry. That's my email kicking off there. Uh, blah, blah, blah. David Moran, blah, 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 who actually was one of the good, he came out to uh, the, the, actually, let me go back a few more. 7th and 12th. 
Spotify wrapped. Oh yeah, someone sent me a uh, a thing about my Spotify wrapped because I think that was the last one I did. Um, I spoke about how many downloads I had. So um, Marcus Tetmar has shown me a picture of Spotify wrapped, and he spent. He says he spent four hundred and forty five minutes with my listening to my podcast. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, here's a new episode to listen to. <laughs> It's, um, but thanks for that. Um, wicked. Thanks a lot. Uh, Josh Woodley, just had a quick question. I was wondering, let me move this up because my eyesight's so shit. Um, move it up to the big screen. Uh, so Josh said, just had a quick question. I was wondering if you've ever had the chance to chat, work with Noel Rogers in any capacity in your career. I often hear his influence in your playing with Jamiroquai. Also, have you ever played one of his hitmaker, White Strats? If so, what did you think? I thought of this question after hearing a track with Niles on it that I hadn't heard before, which reminded me of your playing. <laughs> it's called Work for a Living. I Work for a Living by Fonzie Thornton. Check it out if you haven't heard it, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, well, I have spoken to Niles Rogers a couple of times, actually. Not, uh, <laughs> this is a bit embarrassing. Um, a long time ago, I was on a, I was on a session over in New York. I was doing some songwriting over in New York um, with a guy, what was his name? Jeffrey Franzel, I think his name was. And we had a break. Uh, we we were sort of just in his apartment and uh, we had a break and we went out for some lunch and uh, we were um, standing, I was standing outside a deli um, just about to chomp into this massive sandwich that I'd ordered. And uh, a guy walked past and Jeffrey, the guy I was working with, he said, um, he said, that this guy walked past and he said, oh man, um, Jerry, Jerry, come over here, man. And he, he called him over and um, introduced me. He said, oh, this is Rob Harris. He plays, plays guitar with a band called Jamiroquai. And, you know, and Jerry went, oh, wow, one second. And he just went off, made a phone call, and then just handed me the phone. And I was like, hello, who's this? And he said, oh, hi, it's Nile Rogers. <laughs> and and uh, uh, my, le my, legs, my legs literally went wobbly. I, uh, I just didn't know what to say. I was, I was such in awe of him that I was like, uh, I, I, you know, just became all stammery like a fucking school kid. And um, yeah. Uh, so we had a, a little bit of a chat there. Um, he seemed really cool. Um, I took his number. And then a few years later when we were touring, I kind of nervously texted him saying, look, uh, we were touring in the States. I said, look, we're in New York. We're playing a couple of nights in New York. If you'd like to come along and, you know, I, I, I'll, you know it'd be great to have you come to the gig. Um, and... I don't think he... Oh, yes, he did reply, but I think he replied after the gig saying he wasn't around. He wasn't around. He said thanks, but wasn't around. And then a few years later, um, this is where it's really embarrassing, we were... Uh, Jamiroquai did a show in, in London, uh, in Guildford, Guildford Live, a festival. And uh, Sheik were on before us. Noel Rogers and Sheik were on before us. And... During their show, they're, they're playing Good Times, and, and uh, both myself and Paul Turner, uh, we were we were out front watching, and we decided to take the kids out. Uh, uh, my my son and his son Lewis, um, we went onto the side of the stage to go and watch the band from the side of the stage, so they could see Chic. Um, and we stood there. Paul stood there with his son Lewis. I'm stood there with my son Ollie, and uh, the bass player comes over and comes and grabs them and takes them up onto the bass riser. They're playing good times. He basically grabs their hand. Didn't really know who we were, I don't think. Um, but Jerry, um, Jerry, the bass player from Chic, sort of took our boys up on stage, onto the drum, up onto the, the, uh, the bass riser. And then uh, during, there's a, there's a guitar and bass break. He leads them both by the hand and takes them down to the front of the stage and, uh, you know, Niall and Jerry are getting our boys, Ollie and Lewis, to play air guitar during good times. <laughs> and I, I think I did have tears running down my face at the time because uh, 
Niall is a huge hero of mine. And then this is the embarrassing bit. So afterwards, <laughs> oh shit. Afterwards, we stood there and, uh, you know, our sons were probably, I think, nine, ten, nine at the time. I've got a photograph of it. And I think there's some video footage of it around as well. Um, they came up afterwards and I just didn't know what to say. I shook his hand, <laughs> but I just went completely tongue-tied, quiet, didn't say a word. I'm shit at that stuff. Um, I'm not good at meeting my heroes. Case in point, actually, you know, oh, this has come back to to visit me uh, recently. Uh, sorry, Josh, I'm, I'm, I've gone away from your question. But yeah, I have met Niall. Um, I have actually played the Hitmaker. I've, I've played a couple of them. Yeah, they're great. Um, a couple of students on the, the Spanish, the Elite Music Camps um, thing had, had brought brought them. And they're brilliant guitars. Yeah, great. Really cool. Um, yeah, I'd like to play his, though. Be great to play Niles' guitar, actual guitar. Um, so what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, so uh, another another point was, um, you know, obviously we've just recently lost the amazing Jeff Beck. Uh, yeah, what a shock that was. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, at least normally you hear that people are, are, are poorly before they go, but that was uh, just really out of the blue. So. That was a massive shock. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just hope he wasn't in too much pain for too long or anything like that. I think, um, yeah, that's that hit hit us all hard. I was sat actually in my studio and, um, you know, some of my friends, we were just texting. It was just the news came in and the phone just went berserk. Um, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, a heavy one. Bless him. He was so amazing. So amazing. Um, but uh, I don't want to be that guy, but I, I did. I got to meet him once. And <laughs> and that's why it's, I've thought about it, because um, my friend and I, Booger, who's been on a previous episode of this, which I should get him on again, actually, because he's, he's good fun. Um, we went to see Toto um a long time ago, I think it was their Kingdom of Desire tour. I think it was the first tour after Jeff Picaro had just passed and they and Simon Phillips had just joined the band. Um, so we managed to get tickets to go and see Toto and we were in the... Um, we got after shows and there's Steve Lukather standing there and Jeff Beck and David Gilmore standing in front of us and we're standing with them. And... Uh, <laughs> Again, just completely, I, I just didn't know, I didn't know what to say, didn't have anything to say, because I was just in such awe of these people. I just uh, went quiet, like, you know, <laughs> I've never been good at that stuff. So, uh, yeah, um, I did get to meet him. I did shake his hand and sort of like, you know, hi, but I didn't, uh, I'm, not, I'm not good at, so, you know, I'm not good at having those chats. I'm only good um, when someone has the chat with me, if someone wants to talk to me, I'm, I'm okay. I can have a conversation, but I'm not great at drumming up and, uh, I, I just don't want to be a pain in the ass, you know, um, being a guitar fanboy. Um, I was the same with Steve Luke though. I met, I've met him once, uh, after a gig, we were doing a festival and I, it's quite similar. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can have the conversation if they talk to me, but I'm not just going to try and think of something to say. God, I'm pathetic. Isn't that isn't that nerdy? Um, I'm going to finish up. I'm just going to read a, a message from John Stathopoulos. Hey, John, man, how are you doing? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, he sent me a lovely message. Uh, he just said here, Hi, Rob. I guess a lot of things have been happening during the period you've been away from your podcast listeners. Seems appropriate to say we... Your fans have missed you. Oh, bless you. Well, I was always coming back. I just, uh, it's probably like when, uh, you know, whenever I have a gym membership and I miss it for a week, that means I'm going to miss it for six weeks because I'm crap at that stuff. But I am back. I, I really do enjoy doing this. Um, it just is getting around to doing it. And uh, But hopefully I'll get in the flow of doing it again. I am exercising as well at the moment, so I'm going to try and keep that going. Um, just that sometimes other things take over and you know you you've got other priorities sometimes 
Um, he said, oh, yeah, if you decide to come back to it, I have a question. Have you had any experience playing the really boutique makers such as Anderson or James Tyler? Uh, do, you, uh, do you mean H.S. Anderson? I don't know if you mean that. Or James Tyler, etc., etc. They are really expensive instruments, and I'm wondering what is the reasonable upper limit for your quality price ratio? Is a $5,000 guitar really better than a $3,500 guitar? And what are your thoughts in this stream, especially now that cheap, affordable instruments seem to be getting better and better? Um, my personal opinion on this, my personal opinion, no one else's, just me, is I think if you pick up a guitar and it feels good to you and sounds good to you, it doesn't matter what it costs. All right. Within reason. I've never gone out, I don't think I've ever gone out and spent $5,000 on a guitar. That's just me. Um, but I don't, I love guitars, but I don't have that thing where I have to have the best of this or the best of that. I just don't have it. Um, I've got a lot of instruments and I use them all as tools. So I think, and that's the thing I started to do when I'm, when, whenever I'm buying a guitar or trying a guitar out, I will try and do it. If there's if there's a few versions of the same instrument, I will do it with my eyes shut. So I play it to see what it feels like and see what it sounds like and not what it looks like and not what it costs. I don't really want to know what it costs. Um, that's the way I think of it these days. I didn't always have that. I did used to think, oh, I've got to have that guitar because it costs X amount. Um, but I could never afford them. And I still, to be honest, I can't afford them now. I can't afford to go out and buy a $5,000 guitar. It's just not something I'm going to do. Um, because I do realise you kind of fall in love with these things and then you don't use them for a long time because you you need to use something else. So, no, I, I'm not... I, I know that to some people it is worth it. I completely understand it. Um... And I know some of those. I I do remember playing a, um, the uh, is it the Super Eagle or something the the John Mayer thing that he, before he did the Silver Sky, I got to play one of those PRSs, and that was uh, I think that was around seven or eight grand, and that was an exceptional guitar. That was brilliant, um, but I don't know if it was just that guitar that might have been brilliant. You know. Um, I've got two DGTs here, which they're, you know, they're quite a pricey guitar, but they're both, to me, they're different guitars. One sounds different to the other, and they're both equally good, but I know I pick up one more than I pick up the other one, um, just because it, it's got a darker sound to me, which means the other one's got a brighter sound, which I'll use for different things. But yeah, I don't, uh, I never, I never, um, yeah, you know, I get it. Someone wants to buy a guitar that costs seven thousand dollars, and they love it. Then you do it. It's like a watch, I guess. Um, you know, certain watches cost a certain amount of money, and you're going to have to pay that price tag for that watch, or a car, or whatever. So they are pieces of art. Um, so yeah, I, I just think you. It's whatever you can afford, and whatever floats your boat, what blows your skirt up, as they say. Um, so, yeah. But I've never been one to look at the price tag first and go, I've got to have that because it costs this. Um, I do think they're worth it. I think they are worth it. Um, you know, but it's whatever you like. Uh, you know, as I've said many times, the guitar, if my house was burning down tomorrow, and as long as my lovely wife and dogs were out first um, and no one else was here, I would grab my Japanese vintage Squire because sentimentally that means a lot to me. I bought that myself um, when I was younger. Um, it's, it's a piece of shit, really. It needs a lot of work, but that's what I'd grab first because it's got a sentimental value to me. Have I prattled on enough? Where are we now? 35 and a half minutes, 34 minutes. Um, once again, apologies for being away for so long. Um, and I will be back. I'm back. I'll be back next week, hopefully. Um, 
if anyone's got any questions, I've got a few more to answer that I've, uh, that I've not answered yet, but um, please drop me a, a line at Rob's Funk and Junk, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Rob's Funk and Junk at gmail.com. And um, yeah, I'll get back to you. Anything, anything you want to talk about. We can talk about anything. Fish, chips, uh, uh, prostate examinations, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, fired, pro fired government ministers, you know, who don't pay their tax. Yeah, everyone else does. <laughs> yeah, uh, anything you like. All right, guys and girls, have a lovely week. I hope you're all well out there and uh, enjoy. I hope your years all started off well. Um, 2023 can you believe it fuck me it's the 31st of january 2023 already where did that go um but yeah looking forward to uh, some nicer weather soon and uh, less mud in our house because we, we live in the country there's mud everywhere anyway shut up rob you're prattling on um have a good week everybody much love and see you soon